Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, a psychology book that has sold nearly 2 million copies worldwide, is centered on the concept that author Carol S. Dweck, a professor of psychology at Stanford, suggests that there are two types of mindsets in people, growth mindset and fixed mindset. Carol S. Dweck Carol S. Dweck found that when people are faced with their own abilities, achievements, and unknowns, they will develop two different mindsets, one is the fixed mindset, which believes that qualities and talents are inherent, and the other is the growth mindset, which believes that abilities can be possessed through continuous experimentation and learning. The other is the growth mindset which believes that abilities can be acquired through continuous trial and learning. People with a fixed mindset believe that intelligence is innate and cannot be changed, and will strive to look smart. They view challenges as a challenge and criticism as a nuisance. These people may be successful as youngsters, but ultimately they will not be able to realize their potential. On the other hand, growth mindset people believe that intelligence can be developed through hard work, so they embrace challenges, love to learn, and see criticism as advice. They believe that it's not that they can't learn, but that they just need to practice more. People with this mindset will grow throughout their lives, and their achievements will be unlimited. The Brainwave Laboratory at Columbia University conducted an experiment in which they invited subjects with these two types of mindset to answer difficult questions and provide them with assessment results to see at which stage of their brainwave they showed a higher level of attention. The results showed that the fixed-minded subjects focused their attention on the announcement of the results, i.e., whether they got it right or wrong. However, when the researcher continued to present information that would help them learn, their brainwaves showed no interest in this information, even when the correct solution to their incorrect answer was presented. Growth-minded people, on the other hand, have a different response and are highly interested in information that expands their knowledge, i.e., learning. For example, let's say you had a bad day, went to a class you really liked, and got a midterm paper back with a score of 60 or so. You feel very frustrated, and on your way home in the evening, you find out that you've been given a ticket, and you feel terrible. If you ask a fixed-minded person about this, their response will be, I feel denied, I feel like a failure, I feel useless, and they will see these things as a direct measure of their ability and worth. Are they people with low self-esteem? Or are they typical pessimists? No. When they are not experiencing failure, they are just as optimistic and cheerful as growth-minded people who feel useful. When they fail, their attitude becomes one of I'm going to stay in bed and be lazy, and when they get the chance, they're going to yell at someone and take it out on them. When growth-minded people face the same situation, they think, I need to work harder in class, I need to be more careful when I park, I need to work harder on this test, and they cope with the frustration by taking it in stride. For example, I'll look at what went wrong on that test and try to improve it, I'll pay the red ticket, I'll work hard on my next report, I'll talk to my professor about parking more carefully in the future, or I'll file a complaint about the ticket. Sadness and anger are natural human emotions and may not be related to any kind of mindset, but those with a growth mindset do not label themselves as helpless. They are willing to take risks, meet challenges head on, and keep trying, despite the difficulties. When you begin to understand the fixed-minded mindset and the growth mindset, you will see what works and what does not. If you believe that human qualities cannot be changed, this belief will lead you to many specific thoughts and behaviors. If you believe that human qualities can be developed, this belief will lead you to many different thoughts and behaviors. Digging deeper, different mindsets may have very different definitions of success. Do you think success is about making progress or proving that you're good and smart? Fixed mindset person believe that intelligence is largely fixed and cannot be changed, does this make people non-learners? Growth mentality is more likely to agree that one can significantly change one's level of intelligence. This difference in mentality is easily seen in the corporate world. In the book, for example, the best-selling author Gravel pointed out that the bankruptcy of Enron in 2001, which was once regarded as a model in the corporate world, was due to a mentality problem. 
American business has become obsessed with talent, and the prestigious McKinsey and Company has gone so far as to argue that a cash business must have a gifted mindset in order to succeed. Companies should recruit smart people at all costs, as this is the secret weapon, the key to beating the competition. Because of this, Enron's culture has drawn up a blueprint and sown the seeds of extinction. It didn't matter that most of the people they recruited had impressive degrees and that they paid them well, but with complete faith and belief in their intelligence, Enron did something fatal. Because the culture of worshipping ingenuity forces employees to pursue projects and behaviors that make them look extremely smart and capable, basically forcing them into a fixed mindset. If people live in an environment where natural talent is valued, when their image is threatened, they will face great difficulties, they won't resort to corrective action, they won't admit to their investors that they've done something wrong, and they will quickly lie about it. What are the factors that make some companies go from good to great, and what makes them rise to the level of excellence? After five years of researching 11 companies, the classic bestseller A from A Plus suggests that there are several important factors, one of which is that the type of leader who leads a company to excellence in every situation is someone who can look failure in the eye. Instead of being magical, charismatic, egotistical and pretending to be brilliant, they are humble, unassuming, always asking questions, and are able to face the most brutal answers, but still maintain the confidence that they will succeed in the end. Research has found that these successful leaders share some of the same traits. They have a growth mindset and believe that people can develop and grow. They don't always try to prove that they are better than others, they don't take credit, and they don't put others down to make themselves feel powerful. They are constantly looking to improve, they will surround themselves with the best people they can find, they will look at their own mistakes and shortcomings and they will honestly ask themselves and their company what skills they will need in the future. Because of this, they are able to move forward with confidence based on facts, not on illusions about their own talents. The author explains that we are not necessarily stable in a particular mindset, and that we may exhibit a fixed-minded mindset for certain things or at certain times, and a growth mindset at other times, and that in some cases a fixed-minded person can become a growth mindset and that a person's mindset is not inherent and unchangeable, but rather is a choice. A person's mindset is not inherently unchangeable, but a choice. It is not easy to change from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Many people have a pseudo-growth mindset, claiming to have a growth mindset, but upon closer examination, this is not the case, and the author provides some steps and methods for the journey of mindset transformation. The first step is to embrace your fixed-minded mindset. Facing reality is not something to be ashamed of, we are all a mix of growth mindset and fixed mindset, and this must be recognized. This must be recognized. The second step is to be careful not to trigger your fixed mindset. Your fixed mindset may whisper to you that you may not have what it takes when you are considering taking on a major new challenge. The third step is to give your fixed mindset a name. It's an imaginary persona that you can model and talk to when your fixed mindset comes up, while reminding yourself that you don't want to be that person. The fourth step is to educate and take him with you on your growth journey. If you are stepping out of your comfort zone, he may appear to warn you to stop, so you can try to take him along with you and tell him that you really want to try this and can you please be patient with me. If you have completed the above steps, don't think your journey is complete. In order to keep your growth mindset working well, you must continue to set a goal, a growth goal. While thinking about growth opportunities, you can develop a plan and then think specifically about when, where, how and what you will do to keep growing. This book explains the impact of two mindsets on a person's beliefs in life. They exist together, and changing to a growth mindset may not solve all your problems, but a growth mindset can make a difference in your life make you a fuller, richer person and make you a more energetic, courageous, and open-minded person. A mindset can be changed at any time. No matter what our natural qualities are, no matter what kind of mindset we have to face our life, family, work, and finance, as long as we start to choose to face the difficulties with a growth mindset, and work hard and persist with perseverance, 
tomorrow will always be better than today.